Hi, this is Mike at Brash Monkey again, and uh, this video, this tutorial video, is going to be a bit different from the other ones in that its focus isn't so much on specific uh, features or UI or anything like that. The focus for this video is more about the sort of less obvious things that using Spreader can do for your game development. So let's start off by looking at this coin animation. And I'm just going to scrub through here. Uh, through the timeline by hand, so you can see this is a um, completely tweened. We create the illusion of a 3D object, and it's a looping animation. I'll play it for you now. Okay, so we have this uh, 3D looking rotating coin, and the interesting thing about this is that we have a potentially infinite amount of frames created from actually just four images. So here we have the um, sort of face of the coin, the back of the coin. The um, uh, This is used for the sort of 3D part, the, the sides of the coin. And this uh, represents the, uh, the coin seen perfectly from the side. And very frequently in a game where you're collecting different coins with different point values, um, you would want to actually have the same exact face on both sides of the coin, uh, in which case we could replace this uh, blank back face image with this image. So you'd only be using three unique images to create potentially uh, infinite frames. And by the way, this animation is one of many that will be part of the basic platformer uh, animated art pack that will be released around the same time as Spryder 1.0. And I think it's a very good example of uh, the sort of mindset behind art packs and uh, how useful they're going to be for game creators. Uh, just think, not only can you replace these just a handful of images or edit them to create custom rotating coins for your game, uh, of different point values and sizes and things of that sort. But also with every animation uh, for your game that you're creating with Spryder, uh, you can make a judgment call based on what would be best for your game's performance as to whether or not you're going to use the animation uh, as just uh, actual sequential image files or uh, a Spryder animation. So in the case of this coin, for example, uh, there might be a case where you're going to have potentially uh, tens or hundreds of coins on the screen at a, at a time, in which case you might not want to rely, even though using just three images is very nice on memory, um, you've got the math required for the tweening and then you've got the scaling uh, of the images and things of that sort. Uh, so you might see a bigger frame rate hit by having each coin as an actual Spriter animation as opposed to just baking out uh, however many frames you want, especially because coins are so small typically on screen. Uh, so you might want to just export the coin animation out as a uh, set of PNG files to use in a game. There, and you can end up with something like this. So now you can use uh, standard sequential image, what they call page flipping animation, uh, with as many frames as uh, you see fit for your small coins. But then let's say that there's very large coins in the game, sort of the much more hidden um, bonus point coins or coins that unlock hidden levels or, or things of that sort. Um, you might, because they're infrequent and you don't have a lot of them on screen at a time, you can opt to keep those as Spryder files and thereby benefit uh, with the extremely smooth um, tween animation and uh, not need to use a bajillion um, sequential full frame images to get a smooth animation for your large coin. So that's the main point of this video, is sort of keeping in mind this concept of when you're creating a specific animation for your game project, um, 
you can sort of keep in mind the, the end goal for that particular animation and how it's going to best suit your game. Uh, in other words, for things like characters or lo especially large things like bosses, you're almost certainly going to want to keep it as uh, actual tweened sprite animation within your game so that you've got the benefit of the silky smooth frame rate and very, very low memory usage, whereas um, if it's a very small thing, like a coin or a, a very small special effect that's going to be used over and over again, um, it might be uh, wise to uh, ensure the ideal frame rate for your overall game to bake out those small things that are all over the screen and use them as sequential image animations instead of a tween sprite file. But in the near future, when I get the chance, I'll make a follow-up video showing exactly how I created this particular uh, animation. And just to show you, this doesn't just this method doesn't just work with perfectly uh, sort of coin-shaped objects. I also created a um, a power-up. There we go, rotating power-up as well. And at the very least, this coin animation. Uh, as I said before, both of these or all of these animations are just a small part of the basic platformer art pack that will be available around the same time as Sprayer 1.0. Um, but at the very least, this coin animation um, for these rotating pickups will be available in the free, what we're calling essentials version of the basic platformer art pack. And everyone who uh, is an owner who purchased Sprayer Pro uh, will be will have free access to the essential versions of uh, any art pack we make. And that's it for now. Uh, I hope it was helpful. Have a great day.